Hi everyone and welcome back. So in the previous set of videos we covered uh, how to build a microservice, how to write the test cases, how to deploy the microservice to any of the environment and in the session we did the Heroku deployment through the GitLab CI. Now we are going to talk about this uh, 12 factor principles one by one and we will talk more into the deep. So what we are going to talk about is okay what all different principles are and even not even the 12 factor app we can extend these examples and we can uh, we can introduce a lot of more things to have these kind of principles enabled for your microservice. So there are a lot of common things which you should take care while writing the applications with the docker you might be using nginx you might be using some infra component like uh, let's call it as a red ace or rabbit mq and you will be using node.js npm so there are a few things first we will talk about them like uh, before even talking about 12 factors first of all pin down the npm package version with the yarn.lock or package lock.json so whenever you have a, a microservice or node.js app you always have the package lock or yarn lock file that is used to lock your dependency so that if uh, you have you have the dependency which you are using on dev the same dependencies will be, will be populated on the production because the package lock file contains the integrity it maintains the integrity of your versioning system okay so do not override do not frequently change the package lock json only if the new package is getting introduced you have to push the package lock json onto the dev and same you have to deploy it to the production use git flow i mean you can use a git flow or you can just define your own branching strategy to maintain the the discipline of the de uh, deployment okay like i have a three different environment and i'm just creating a feature branch raising the merge request against develop then stage and then master manage configurations with the environment variable that we are doing in each and every example you can see we have talked about seven eight examples we are using dot env dot env dot test and in the application also we are using config module to populate the runtime config to the application from dot env dot example okay run stateless docker containers i mean docker containers are like okay you start it and you dispose it and you kill it right those, those are stateless those are not holding the state of your application okay now export services with the docker port binding this is all about how we deal with the docker and we are use, already using docker compose we are spinning up sometimes uh, a single container like postgres and node.js container okay so we are writing docker compose app docker compose yml and we are defining these two different applications two different containers right here we are talking about only local setup but you can also scale those containers you can have multiple uh, node.js container multiple instance and you can have like single postgres container so this is how you can scale your api services and you can also put an nginx in front of your multiple node.js docker containers you have okay ensure containers runs and high availability i mean on the local this is fine but if you are using ecs or if you are using any docker technology to deploy your application then you have to ensure the high availability of those containers or you can use a Kubernetes if you don't want to manage the docker containers okay we have to pipe out the the log stream from the docker i mean it depends if you are using docker docker dockerized environment for the deployment of your application currently like, like in the last video we used uh, heroku and heroku is using its dynos which is a machine and we are just running node index.js and it is starting the node.js application there but internally it's not like today but tomorrow we will be using docker containers for the deployment also you will be deploying an application to a particular container on the kubernetes cluster then these things matters okay now let's talk about uh, 12 factor uh, code base is fine dependencies like uh, we have to explicitly isolate the dependencies and in the dependencies also there are different type of dependencies yeah, uh, uh, core dependencies which you need to push to the productions and dev dependencies which you don't want, right? And Heroku is doing the right thing. It is discarding the dev dependencies before it is creating the final build. Okay, so dev dependencies are used only for running the test or running the coverage or it it is having the type definitions of all your packages like Nest.js, 
type or MSDS, all the type you can see at the rate types and the package names all are put in the dev dependencies because we don't need it once the product once the build has happened right the configurations configurations you can manage in different services like uh, there is a Hasi Corp uh, vault uh, AWS also provides the secret service I mean uh, I'm not able to recall the service name I mean that is AWS component that will manage the configuration for your microservice configurations means your database details redis connection details your rabbit mq connection details and you can secretly access those uh, credentials from the aws component like it is securely storing all those services all those key value pairs okay build uh, release and run we are actually we have to isolate all these steps so what we can do is we can only use the scripts in the package.json npm run build, npm run watch, npm run start, npm run deploy, npm run test, right? Everything is a separate script and we have isolated everything. npm run test, even the unit test, integration test, npm run migration, npm run db, uh, migrate, generate, right? All these scripts, you can see our code base also, like what all kind of scripts we have. We have isolated each and everything. So from build to deploy to test everything is, is a separate script okay now let's talk about the processes right so execute app as one or more stateless processes like uh, when the application process is running what we need to do is we need to we need to listen to these two events system and sysint to know when it's a shutdown sometimes what happens in the node.js app it throws uh, the runtime errors like uh, okay it is being externally killed then you have to handle those events and you have to gracefully kill the process right that you can also do in the code like by listening to those events we will start as we will stop receiving the request from the client because we will kill and we will reload the page it will flush the database connections it will clean up everything and then it's like graceful shutdown of your node.js instance whenever you get these kind of events season and system we have to listen to this process dot on season process dot on system port binding so port binding happens like you have to expose a port and you have to provide the dynamic variable process dot env dot port so that port can be assigned dynamically to your service uh, concurrency so our your application so what happens is concurrency means when you want to scale your application to the multiple instance then you have to make sure that your application instance your any of your docker instance should not store the state of the system state of this application like let's say you are doing cookie based authentication and you have like four containers cookie based authentication done on the node.js instance 1 then node.js instance 2 doesn't have information about the cookie based authentication so even if you are many if you are deploying the application on the multiple instance and doing a horizontal uh, scaling and vertical scaling you should not store the state of the system in your in your instance you externalize it you store the session on the redis or you store the session on the database keep your instance stateless so all the instance can access the externalized state from the database or from the redis because there they can do the communication but the inter instance communication is not possible and we should not we should always avoid doing that let's say here are the steps uh, that takes when the request comes in request comes in we pass their session cookies to figure out who they are we look up in their information in the database and process the request now we are not storing the cookie based information in the express session we externalize it we are storing the session in the database so who, whatever the instance is receiving the request they will always validate it against the database because they doesn't have the state of the session so they will always talk to the database to verify this we can also use the redis memcached and all disposability is about uh, graceful shutdown which we already discussed like you should always listen to the system and sys int events okay and gracefully shut down the application so that if you are using load balancer then that particular instance shut down so other instance which is running should be able to take the load and 
automatically it restarts because we might be using Kubernetes or some kind of a process manager. So it keeps watching your uh, process if it is not, if it is having trouble, then it will restart and uh, restart the process. Dev prod parity that is happening through like the config or environments because we have the same code base and we are deploying it to all different environments. So we are using node env and based on the node env inside the code also, we are enabling disabling things, right? So node env, if this is a production, okay, do this. If this is a staging, then do this. So from the node env, we can identify, okay, what all things needs to be done. Logs. The treat logs as the event streams. Logs are very important when it comes to the applications. So currently, if you have seen that uh, in the, my previous demo, I was using log entries. That is the add-on of the Heroku. But you can use ELK stack or something to pipe out the logs and write it somewhere so that you can see it somewhere. Like the ELK stack, Elastic Logs Test Kibana. But you should be using the, the locker module, Winston logger module, which can, be, which can write the logs to the file, which can write the logs to the console or maybe a to external service. So you should be using uh, the log tracing mechanism in the distributed uh, distributed services. You have multiple services and you want to aggregate the logs and how you will do it. Either you use a common third party service like Rollbar or something to get the error logs or you will use log entries on the Heroku to get the aggregate logs. But still the aggregation is a need because log entries will give you the logs coming from individual service. What if your request is going through service A, service B, service C, service D? There is a whole path and you have to trace the request in this distributed system. Then how you do it? You have to put the correlation ID onto a particular request and that same correlation ID will travel through all the microservice. Because, and then from that aggregate logs, you will just search the correlation ID and then you will be able to get the logs. Okay, this request came to service A, outbound, outbound request to B and incoming request to service C and there you can de debug all these things. Okay, uh, then other things are like blue green deployment, continuous integration, continuous deployment uh, using git flow. We have already seen it, how we are doing the CI CD using GitLab CI. Now it can be Circle CI, Travis CI, Jenkins. It, it's all same thing. There are like different features, build, install, test and deploy. Inside a deployment, either you are actually copying the artifacts or you will be triggering the build like same as Heroku. Okay, so this is all about like the 12 factor applications and I already covered 10, 11 videos. This is, this may be uh, one of the last video. Now we will talk about some more best practices which you should use to write microservice. So the last example we talked about is this. Now let's see what else we can add to this particular module which will make it foolproof like we need to have a health check mechanism that I think we are already using. So we can use a nest.js terminus module to do the health check of your resources like if it is connecting to the Redis, uh, RabbitMQ, Kafka or database it can give you the health of each and everything. Okay that is a health check you can also use some kind of a error reporting service like rollbar what you are doing is you can see the services and inside services, if any of the wrong thing is happening inside a catch block, you can log that to the role bar that we will see in the next video. And similarly, how you can make your application up and running, you can use the process managers with the deployment. Okay, and you can write the proper test cases and test cases should run before you do the deployments. All these simple, simple things like uh, how you structure your code, your code should looks clean, uh, you should have a proper health check mechanism, you should have a proper uh, tools integrated, you can also integrate a new relic here, you can just need to have a new relic.js and pass the key and you can use a lot of different tools like new relic, uh, log entries, rule bar and there are many which can actually monitor your application performance, okay. From New Relic, you can get the, the statics about how your APIs are performing, how much they are, how much time they are taking, and even the database statics about all the queries which you are triggering. Okay, let's see all those things in the coming videos. Thanks everyone.